Hey guys, welcome back to Founder Stock. Today we'll be talking about Rachel Wong. Rachel Wong, is that you? No, we'll be talking about the real influencer, Rachel Wong, who is way prettier than me. And we'll be going through the case of Rachel Wong versus Olivia. Hi, my name is Rachel. I'm a corporate lawyer. And my name is Swang. I'm a disputes lawyer from Eugene Turisingham. In this video, we'll be going through the case of Rachel Wong versus Olivia and giving you three tips for better social media hygiene. So with that in mind, Rachel, who are the parties in this Rachel Wong case? There were five people involved in the Rachel Wong versus Olivia case. There was Rachel Wong, the pretty influencer, not me. There was Andes, the good-looking soccer player. There was Alan, the person that Rachel allegedly had an affair with. And then there was Anders' current partner's friend called Olivia. So what happened in the case, Song? What happened was, at around the end of 2019, Anders and Rachel got married. But just a few months afterwards, they entered into the process to annul their marriage. In the meanwhile, Olivia puts up a few Insta stories, which appear to allege that Rachel had engaged in adultery, meaning she had slept with Alan while being married to Anders. Rachel understandably was very aggrieved at this and therefore commenced the defamation lawsuit against Olivia. So what is defamation song? For example, well, I don't have a husband, but if I say that my ex-husband is a and I put it on WhatsApp, would that be defamation? There are three main ingredients to defamation and let's apply that to your case. The first ingredient is that there must be publication of a statement or communication of a statement to at least a party. So if you send it in a WhatsApp to another person, that can be taken as publication. Second requirement is that the communication or statement must refer directly or indirectly to a person. You have referred to your ex-husband and therefore there is referral. Which does not exist. Indeed, if he were to exist, certainly. And lastly, uh, that statement must lower the subject's standing in the eyes of right-thinking members of the public. So here you have said that he's a and presumably that would lower his reputation in the eyes of right-thinking members of the public. Got it. And in the Rachel Wong versus Olivia case, Olivia pulled an Uno reversal card. What was that about, Song? In that case, Olivia, as part of her defense, says even if her stories should be construed as alleging that Rachel had committed defamation. It's the truth. The truth is, she did uh, commit adultery. So, to support this defense, Olivia applied to court to ask the court to order Rachel to provide disclosure of entries in Rachel's diaries and correspondence which may or may not suggest that Rachel did indeed have such liaisons with Alan. And what happened in the case in the end? Well, uh, after these orders were made by the judge, uh, which were not so favourable to Rachel, uh, parties later on entered into an amicable resolution. Of course, the terms of that amicable resolution are confidential, uh, but what was publicised uh, to the world is that Olivia withdrew all her statements. Uh, she made a public statement saying uh, those statements were unnecessary and Olivia made an unreserved apology to Rachel. So for our viewers, we would like to give you three tips for better social media hygiene based on the case of Rachel Wong versus Olivia. The first tip is if you're making a statement, think before you make a public statement. Now, Swang, if I'm merely just WhatsApping someone, would that be considered a public statement? Under the current law of defamation, merely communicating a statement to somebody would be sufficient to amount to publication. So yes, just WhatsApping somebody a defamatory allegation may amount to defamation. The second tip that we have for you is if you're making a statement, make sure it is true. So, Swang, if I say something like, my ex-husband is ugly and he is truly ugly, would I be in trouble for defamation? Well, I suppose the defendant, yourself, may put up a defense called justification. It's entirely true. I see. And the third tip that we have for you is, Swang, if I see a post saying something like, John is scandalous, and I don't say anything, I don't like it, but I merely repost it without any comments, would I get into trouble? 
The short answer is potentially yes. And I know the answer may surprise a few people, but under the current law, again, if the underlying statement is defamatory and you, the defendant, merely share it or repost it, that in and of itself may amount to defamation, even if you didn't mean to agree with it or endorse it or say personally you know about it. So if you enjoyed this video, remember to like it, share it, and comment below. And remember, if your comment is defamatory, you will get a letter from Swan. <laughs> Sorry, you won't. <laughs> Until we next meet, please take care and stay well. Goodbye.